Sudden death is an ever-present reality for firefighters. Apart from road deaths, house fires kill more people than any other type of incident the firefighters attend. In the last year, firefighters from Humberside Fire and Rescue undertook hundreds of search and rescue operations. When there's a person trapped, firefighters put their own life at risk in the search to save another. In the UK, thousands of lives are saved by firefighters, but hundreds are sadly lost. Last year, seven people died in East Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire. Despite doing the job for 10 years, Matty Astrop still finds it hard to deal with. And this emergency will see the figure rise from seven to eight. In a house fire, a smoke detector can be the difference between life and death. If only more people had smoke alarms. These days, firefighters don't just put out fires, they also work hard to prevent them. The same firefighters that attended the fatal fire are outfitting smoke alarms, free of charge. The Rudland household want Matty and his crew to check their house is as fire safe as it can be. First, they make sure all the fire alarms are working. So there's this one and the one downstairs, yeah? That one's yeah. wired into the system there. And there's an old one there. Humberside Fire and Rescue's region takes in both sides of the River Humber. On the south bank, their busiest station is Scunthorpe. Rob Vaux has been a firefighter for seven years. It's down as a kitchen fire. It could be electrical, to be, to be fair. It could be a uh, fridge or washing machine or dishwasher. It's either electrical or cooking in the kitchen. When the team arrive, there's no sign of the family, and there's banging coming from inside. Smoke is billowing from the kitchen. A team wearing breathing apparatus go into the smoke-filled kitchen. They need to find out what, or more worryingly, who is knocking. <laughs> Nick Granger is Humberside Fire's officer in charge of media. They've put together a fire safety pack for house sellers and now is doing the rounds of the local radio stations to publicise it. Well, the fire safety pack contains all the basic information, the literature that's necessary to know to run a fire safe house. The idea being that what we will do is we'll go into the houses of people who are trying to sell their properties, well, obviously we'll be informed by the estate agents who they are, and we'll construct this pack in conjunction with them. We'll fit them smoke alarms, we'll identify things like if they've got fire escape windows, because clearly that's a, that's a boon to someone who's trying to sell a house, it's a positive. The crew searching the house in Scunthorpe can't find where the mysterious banging is coming from. A toaster's set the kitchen alight, but there's no sign of anybody trapped. They make one final search. We'll fit them smoke alarms and we'll construct fire escape plans. So in essence, what happens is when someone comes to view that house, they can be given the pack that says, I am a fire safe house. These are safety conscious people who have thought about that aspect. And it's a real positive with regard to the sales process. The important thing was we got our point across about the need for smoke alarms, which of course is the, the goal behind every interview we give really. In Hull, Chris and Matty are doing a thorough job fitting smoke alarms, but it's reminding them of a recent fatal fire they attended. She was quite badly burned, and, and obviously we found out later that she didn't survive it, and you just, she, I think she was in her 30s, it's, it's a waste of her life really, and it's, it's quite upsetting, especially when you've been to the incident and, you, and you've seen the person, you've been involved in it, when you hear this you think, you know, you thought they should have maybe had a, had a smoke alarm, you know, it could have been, it could have been so different. It was Isabella's kitchen that caught fire. After dialing 999, she took her children and ran next door. I was upstairs on the toilet when I came down. Yeah. The lunchbox on top of the toaster yeah. was on fire. Yeah. But I didn't put the lunchbox on there, so one of the kids must have done it. Yeah. And it seems one of the children knows how the fire started. Put the toaster on. And where were you? The mystery banging was actually a neighbour knocking at the front door. He'd heard the smoke alarm from outside. Even when they're out fixing smoke alarms, they can still be called to an emergency. We've got to turn it around now. And they are. A flat fire with people thought to be trapped inside. Flat 
Fire. Where is it, Swig? Do you know where it is? It's been quite a shock for Isabella and her family. They've had a lucky escape. Both children were downstairs alone, and had Isabella not heard the smoke alarm, it could have been much worse. For Frank Lewis and his family, it was. They paid the ultimate price for not having a smoke alarm. Were you in bed at the time of the fire? We were in bed at the time of the fire, yes. And the noise wakes you up first. The right. growl, there's a lot of growl. Yeah. I'm laid in bed with the wife, I couldn't see the wife. Yeah. That's how black it is. Yeah. Genuinely, that's how black Was the bedroom door open or closed? Closed. Closed, okay. I pushed with the wife, she pushed me together, pushed each other more or less, fell on the floor. I crawled to the door, opened it, and this heat was so intense, so unbelievably hot, mm. that I just shoved it back to her. There was no way I could go through there. No. There wasn't it. I'd, if I'd it's left physically it open, impossible. Yeah. Come on, come on. Having been called to a flat fire in Hull, Matty and his crew are stuck in nose to tail traffic. The team already on the scene need backup. Any any bit of time you can save on, on route, just make sure that everything's everything's in place, everything's working. As they nudge through the congestion, they're getting more information from the radio. It's a flat fire well alight, so it's obviously a job. Request an additional compass sent to this incident in case we don't make it. Obviously, most people know that they need to get out of the way as quickly as they can because it's on an emergency call. The trouble is, people are usually bumper to bumper, and uh, there is absolutely nowhere for them to go. The driver is forced to take drastic measures to get through the traffic. He has to cut corners and head along the lane of oncoming traffic. Just getting to a fire can be risky. Just over here. But you don't count. You don't count. And your eyes don't run. Within minutes of the fire taking hold, the heat and fumes left Frank and his wife close to death and oblivious to what might be happening to the rest of the family. In your mind, you accept that that's it. It's over with. I seriously have thought a long and hard, and I do think that that, when, at the point in time where we finally found the window, which is hard to find. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure in my mind I'd accepted that I was going to die. That I won't get no further. By doing what you're doing, you don't realise how massive a thing it is you're doing, because that is going to help something good to come out of something that was but so But it's horrific. not a massive thing to me. It's, it's my way, I, there isn't a word. How do you say to a man who saved your life, thank you? You can't say thank you, that, that's not a word, it's not enough. I'm running. Right up, Matt. Matty, Chris and the rest of the crew have arrived at the flat fire. They're 10 minutes late, thanks to Hull's dreadful congestion. There's already two teams of firefighters searching the flat. The person who lives here is nowhere to be seen. The officer in charge is Phil Jackson. Yeah, we've just got a report of an incident uh, possible persons reported to have committed six BA wearers. It's heavily smoke locked at the moment, is the flat. And obviously the crews are working in, in darkness to search them out. So until the crews come out, we'll probably want to get more further information. But for what they have got in there is a thermal image camera which will help them sort of see in the dark, if you like. <laughs> this is the first time Frank has spoken publicly, but he feels strongly that his experience should be used to prevent others from going through what he has. It's been two years since the tragedy took the lives of his granddaughter and son-in-law. He and his family are still very much coming to terms with the ordeal. So no, we'll never ever part as a family, but, but there are strange come to Christmas and nobody seems to care. No, it must be so hard. You know, what are you doing at Christmas? Well, 
Well, last year we did nothing, you know, we just sat. It just doesn't seem much point to it. That's, no, that's the hard bit. It's a real strong memory as well, isn't it? Because it There's got to be a point. Way. You've got to fight on. You've got to you try have. And Absolutely you've right. You've got to try and stop somebody else dying. That's yeah. the main thing. Matty and Chris are searching a flat in Central Hull. And I've got a stick in the they think there are people inside and a full search and rescue operation is underway in almost zero visibility. The team outside awaits news. Backup crews and the police have arrived on the scene. Whenever there may be casualties, the firefighters keep their own medical and resuscitation kits standing by. Firefighters from West Hull Fire Station are visiting the area close to the scene of a house fire where a few nights ago someone lost their life. Firefighters at Immingham in North Lincolnshire want to show how destructive a house fire can be and how quickly it spreads. Ryan and his colleagues have built a replica living room, complete with furniture, a Christmas tree and presents. In a few minutes, they'll set it alight. Although it is a festive period, the more stuff you put in the room, the higher the fire loading. Uh, therefore, your room is going to catch fire even quicker, so we can demonstrate that today. And we're laughing. It's a crude but effective stunt, but it's got the local media interested. Fit the smoke alarm in here. So uh, we can demonstrate just how quick and effective they actually are at detecting smoke to give you that extra few minutes warning. Thanks. At the whole flat fire, six firefighters in full breathing apparatus have thoroughly searched the flat. Matty and Chris are the first team out. You can see from, from the outside of the, of the flat that it, it's quite a severe fire, so you know you've got something to deal with. But the, the initial thing for this instance was it's still a possible person's. Nobody in there, no. I had the thermal image camera, um, so I can see pretty much everything anyway. Any, any heat source I can pick up there. I didn't detect anybody in there, no. He looks after me and I look after him, basically. Your BA partner is, is you know, your life's in their hands, and, uh, and vice versa, really. So the bond's got to be very strong there, yeah. You've got to trust him 100%, and he's got to trust me 100%. Changing our cylinders over, because we, we might get another fire call now within the next two or three minutes, so. You know, we've got to get all set service and so they're ready to use again. Paul Holton and his crew have called on over a dozen homes with fire prevention messages. But they're still available for fire calls and now they've got one. It's another flat fire. Roger, mobile, figure three, four, 34. A neighbour has seen smoke coming from the flat and thinks the owner is out. Nevertheless, they still search wearing full breathing apparatus. Right on, mate. OK. Nobody in, no. no. Nobody in, but the back door's open. But the boys are in there just having a, a little squint. The Immingham fire crew has recreated a familiar Christmas scene. Just going to light it in here. We've got a little fire lighter. Ryan's not used to starting fires. He puts them out for a living. But this demonstration is designed to show how quickly a fire can take hold. As the flame takes hold, the Christmas presents are the first thing to catch fire. Already the smoke alarm is sounding, giving early warning and plenty of time to get out. Just 30 seconds in, the tree takes hold. From there, the carpet, chair, TV, and shelving all become fuel for the fire. In just two minutes, the room is an inferno. Anybody asleep in this room would pass out and almost certainly die. You can see now, you know, anybody that's in that room now will be dead. Within, I would imagine, within another minute, the whole room will has gone. Well, the room's gone. We've got the carpet's going. So the roof's gone. A smoke alarm in the hallway or next room would now be going off, even with a closed door, giving those in the house ample time to escape. 
Without a smoke alarm, it would be just a matter of seconds before the unthinkable could happen. These are arresting images. This started just three minutes ago from one small flame, in the same way as the fire that destroyed Frank's family home. Earlier in the day, Frank launched the smoke alarm campaign. His willingness to talk about the tragedy in which his family members perished means he's in demand from the local media. Already today, he's recorded interviews for the evening news. Frank Lewis survived the fire that killed his seven-year-old granddaughter and his son-in-law. Little Holly Smith and her dad Ian died at their home in Grimsby in the early hours of Boxing Day two years ago. For a long time I blamed myself because as head of the family I should have been more protective. At his next interview, Fire Officer Paul Blowers has nothing but praise. Frank has been through a, a, a real ordeal and uh, to come and uh, face the cameras today and, and pour out his personal tragedy in, in front of uh, the community is very courageous but he's very determined in that he wants to say, come on, get yourselves a smoke alarm. All right. The West Hull house fire is out. It was the living room chair that had caught fire. Paul Holton and Niall McKinnery are surveying the damage. Yeah, if you ask people to shut the doors and that's what they've done. The living room and hallway door were closed and so the fire and smoke were contained in the front room. That was your armchair, right? Yeah. Okay. It was on fire. Harold's 75 and lives alone. He just nipped down to the shops and returned to find a part of his home in ruins. So what set the chair alight? Is it normal for you to have a cigarette just before you go out, would you? Yeah. Can you recall? Yeah, about, uh, about that time, weren't you? You, you, had, you had a fag before you went yeah. out? Yeah. How old are you, are you 76? 76. 76, right. right. 75, yeah. What we'll do is we'll get somebody down to have a word with you. Fiercely independent. Um, he was look at, looking after himself and uh, to be faced with this, what we'll try to do is we'll get the fire victim support people down. Fire victim support is a service provided by the British Red Cross and staffed, amongst others, by volunteer firefighters and social workers. Carol is a social worker and Sean a firefighter. Paul has asked them to drop in to see Harold. And how are you? All right. Are you well, okay? I'm all, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Right. Can I ask you a question? Are you insured? No. You're not insured. Not nothing at all. A whole central crew are on their way to another emergency. A garage is on fire, and the caller says the fire is spreading to the house. The owner was asleep, and his smoke alarm may well have saved his life. It came out and it's just big fire come out. I don't know who, who's done it. Firefighters have today simulated the exact conditions which... Frank's last interview of the day is with local radio. Could I ask you, Frank, to tell me a little bit about your story? What happened to you? Two years ago on Boxing Day morning, we had a fire that... Uh, my granddaughter and son-in-law didn't escape from because we didn't have a smoke alarm, basically. The garage fire had spread to the house roof, but now it's out. Firefighter Paul Mortimer has seen dozens of house fires. Complete devastation, absolutely. It's, um, even the smallest fire can wreck your whole house. Yeah. It doesn't have to be engulfed in flames, so yeah. absolutely ruin all your possessions. And seeing it from this side, you know, we feel for the people, we have to go into the, the houses, and you come out and you're absolutely, you know, you're gutted for the people. It's, it's happened to. The family next door are shaken at the thought of the fire spreading through the loft. Work, my husband in the bay now. You never know where fire's going to go. It's unpredictable. And I thought, well, there's boxes in my loft. If it goes into my loft, it's in my house. So my that comes then, there's no burn in there. And that is it. It's just a burn, wasn't it? it he's, he's pleasant for that poor little thing. 
make sure you have a smoke alarm because it will save your life. If you haven't got a smoke alarm, you haven't got a chance. You will not Frank's campaign to raise awareness of the need for smoke alarms means reliving his own tragedy. However painful it is for him, he's determined to spread the message. Even if it does stir memories, he'd prefer to forget. It hurts, a lot of times it hurts to talk about it, but, but it must be spoken about, it must be talked about. It, it really does hurt sometimes. But it's got to be done. How in God's name are you going to stop people dying like this if you don't do it? And maybe it gives me a reason to live now, I don't know. Maybe it's just helping me along the way. I'll get there. I will, honestly, I'll get there. Let's go have a fight.